Tom, we'll begin with a quotation. Then-candidate Barack Obama in July 2008, quote, It's like these guys, Republicans, take pride in being ignorant. They should go talk to some experts and actually make a difference. Well, talking to experts does make a difference. Uh, many of the great disasters of our time have been uh, committed by uh, experts. Uh, you can run through an impressive list of things, of disasters brought about by people with very high IQs. I see. Let me quote uh, intellectuals in society, quote, the fatal misstep of intellectuals is assuming that superior ability within a particular realm can be generalized to superior wisdom or morality overall. What bearing has that got on the influence that intellectuals have over society as a whole? Because they, they believe that since knowledge is concentrated in people like themselves, what needs to be done is, uh, in a quote from, from uh, President Obama, is to put more power in the hands of, of the experts. When you refer to intellectuals in intellectuals in society, whom do you mean? I mean people whose end products are ideas. They're a a research scientist is not necessarily an intellectual. That's right. He, he, an engineer isn't necessarily that's right. an intellectual. Because the engineer is, is judged by uh, the end product, uh, which is not simply ideas. If he builds a building that collapses, it doesn't matter how brilliant his idea was, uh, he's ruined. Uh, conversely, if an intellectual who's brilliant has an, has an idea to, for rearranging society, and that ends in disaster, he pays no price at all. So the intellectual temptation is to say, look, we already know everything. That's right. If only we also had the power. all the power, yes. everything would be just fine. Yes. And what's wrong with that view? Why isn't that a sensible view? One, they don't know everything. They don't, have, they don't know one-tenth of everything. Uh, in fact, I, I, I argue that they, they probably don't know 1% of the consequential knowledge in a society. Consequential knowledge is a, is a, is a, a concept that runs through this book. Explain that concept. Knowledge whose presence or absence has consequences, serious consequences. The notion here is that the kind of knowledge, the kind of consequential knowledge required to prove effective in governing a nation, of, such as the United States with the biggest economy in the world, 300 million people, you can put together quite a large group of professors mm. and they're still not going to possess the knowledge that would enable them to run General Motors, for example, or to run the nation's health care system, for example. Oh, I, I, absolutely. Uh, in fact, one of, the, one of the things that has happened all around the world in the 20th century was that any, all sorts of countries have tried central planning. Now, the guys who run the central planning, they usually have advanced degrees from uh, prestigious institutions. They have mountains of statistics uh, uh, sitting there, and they have all the experts in the country at their beck and call. And yet when you take the power out of their hands and return it to the market, then all the hundreds of millions of people who don't have any of those things usually end up with a higher rate of growth and a more rapidly, uh, rapid decline in poverty. Because consequential knowledge by its nature tends to be diffused, widely diffused. Yes, yes. I mean, I was once in a plane that was coming down for a landing in the Ithaca airport, uh, and suddenly the pilot gunned the motor and went up again because someone in the control tower had, told, told, had reminded him that he hadn't lowered, lowered his landing gear. Uh, so that was consequential, consequential knowledge. knowledge right? Yes, <laughs> yes. I was just delighted that that person had, had, had his eyes open and his mind on his work. So